This is 2OF Entertainment. Hi, it's Kiffin LeBates here. So I've been thinking on and off, uh, pretty much on a, an almost daily basis uh, for the last three months, about digital certificates and certificate authorities. Now, uh, Chainfrog has a few patents in the area of blockchain key announcement and revocation, which relates to this. And I was looking for a particular um, area in which these things could be applied. Um, so a quick primer for those of you who aren't fully aware of what goes on in the world of digital certificates. Uh, a digital certificate is basically a public key of a public-private key pair or an asymmetric uh, cryptography key pair. And you uh, have a whole load of data associated with the public key. So uh, organization, maybe a person, maybe an address, these kind of things. And digital certificates, um, X509 certificates, are used in the industry uh, for web servers and um, browsers. Now, they're actually used for two purposes, uh, one of which is very good, namely to ensure that the communication between your browser and the web server is encrypted and therefore can't be listened in on. This means that you can then uh, log on with your user ID and password to a website, for example, and uh, people can't steal your password when you're sending, sending it across to the web server. So that's all very well and good. But the second purpose that they're used for is for identity. And the idea is that you put, you buy a certificate off a certificate authority and you put it on your website and when your browser goes to the website uh, it checks that the certificate presented uh, has been signed by a certificate authority and is therefore authentic and this is meant to provide you as a user with an assurance that you are indeed logging onto your bank and not onto some kind of spoof site uh, however it doesn't really work very well um, there are People have learned to trust the green padlock or the company name that appears in the address bar when they go to an HTTPS site. But uh, it's been shown that it's actually very easy to set up a company with the same name in a different state in the US, for example, and get issued with a certificate. And then to your average user, uh, this company can put up a website and pass themselves off as a different company. There was uh, one guy who bought a whole load of PayPal um, certificates uh, because he had a company registered in a different uh, um, uh, state uh, by that name. So what he was doing was perfectly legal, uh, but it could have been used for a fraud. So uh, separating these two things out, uh, digital certificates can be used to encrypt communication and they could be used for identity except that the overhead in actually performing due diligence on issuing the certificates isn't really there and as a result uh, identity on in the web is broken so uh, I've been lucky enough to talk with a number of different people who have been working on this problem for quite some time and it's made me realize that uh, although I've identified the problem and have got some working potential solutions there's still a long way to go um, there'll be a whole bunch more videos on this in the future if you're interested so keep your eyes open for that and uh, this was just an introduction hope to see you in the next video soon bye for now